Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. Today's video is me updating my digital journals again. This one is for a manhwa I read on Valentine's Day called Sweet and Cold. Honestly, I probably shouldn't even have made a spread about this because it was so short. It was like six chapters long or something like that, but I just love the art so much. I had so many screenshots from when I was reading it and I just could not leave them behind. <laughs> so I had to make a spread. I really could not pick out what kind of background I wanted for this one. I really wanted to use pink and blue at first, but then I realized that in my journal, the spread right before this one would be pink and blue, like the exact shades of pink and blue I was planning on using. And I don't know why, I just didn't want that right next to each other. And I thought green would also work really nicely, but in the end, I decided to go with this like heart or a wallpaper background. And then for the other side of the spread, at first I tried to use the background I used before with like the sequins on it because I really like that. But I decided to just use a plaid background, but I changed the color of it to purple by using the custom duotone feature, which I'll show you how to do later in the video in case you're unfamiliar. I feel like the purple looks nice. There's a lot of really pretty lighting. I think it was in the first chapter because they were like at a party, the main characters were, and I really like that. Once I had kind of the base layer down, I decided that I wanted to use some kind of memo sheet. So I started scrolling through Pinterest and I found this super duper cute panda phone printable. I was immediately in love. So I added it to the spread to test the placement of it before I removed the background. I also found this Pochaco memo sheet that I liked and I really thought I would use it. But once I started adding the green stars that I made by using um, a star frame and that green plaid wallpaper I'm always using and then added the panda phone back in, the Pachaco memo sheet, it was just taking up too much space, so I deleted it. I've been loving pandas lately for some reason, which you'll see later as well. There, there are more pandas in this video. Honestly, I feel like I'm kind of anti-zoo, but there are almost no pandas left in America. And the last time I went to the zoo, I was really, really little, so I don't even have like a memory of seeing a panda. And now I guess I never will because they're all going to be sent back to China. Oh, also I wanted to mention that I found this author's Twitter and they hadn't posted in a while, but what I did find was that they had so much Harry Potter and Malfoy fan art. So when I looked back at these characters, I was like, oh. <laughs> I do love seeing the media that influences authors and artists though. I just really wish they were more active because I would love to see more of their work. The style is just really, really nice. So I hope that Jung Lennon can publish more work in the future. Isn't that just the thing though? Like as soon as you find someone whose art you like or whose work you like, you go to like check out what else they have <laughs> and there's just nothing. I feel like that happens to me a lot, especially with web comics like this. I just, I guess since they're becoming so much more common, companies want to push more and more out. So there are a lot of first time authors. Anyway, after I added the manhwa title and the date, I decorated the rest of the spread with the things I always use, my hot pink stars and the diamonds. And of course my favorite Hello Kitty jelly stickers. I love that little Mimi so much. I keep using it. I also added some Hee Hee Club stickers. And then to finish it up, I added a piece of pink line paper to the right side because I thought it would keep my writing from being too messy. I just adjusted the transparency of it as well as the heart wallpaper until I got the look I wanted. And then this spread is finished. The next spread is for my movie journal. I watched the 2020 version of Rebecca. I wanted this to be more vintage themed or I guess have more vintage inspired items. I don't think I used anything really new in this though. I specifically saw that painting, well, I should say I searched for paintings. I wanted something kind of like impressionist looking. I wanted it to be definitely just something nature inspired, but specifically I wanted it to either have like maybe the sea or like a lot of grass around it. And I saw this one and it kind of reminded me of um, the driveway to Manderley. So if you're unaware, Rebecca the movie is based off of Rebecca the book. And I would say if you're like me and you've read the book, I would not watch this movie. I don't think it's a good adaptation. I can't really say like in an unbiased sense if you should just watch the movie if you've never read Rebecca because I really don't know. It just wasn't that good of an adaptation. But anyway, in the book, there is this large house that's like very central to the story and it's called Manderley. And there's a really long driveway that leads to it. And so I thought that the painting really looked like people kind of like on, on, a, on a drive, right? Like they're like in like a little carriage. And so um, even though Rebecca is not set that far into 
the past. It's set in like the 1920s or 30s, the 1930s, I think. I still felt like just the sense of it, like just how it looked, I don't know, something about it reminded me of going to Manderley. So I wanted to use that. And of course, I just added some starry doodles onto the top of it. I think that always looks cute. And I really love the pressed flower that I used in this. I feel like that pink really matches with the doodles, the stars pink, even though I did not change the color of the stars to match that. It just happened to work out really well. A sign that I should be using that pressed flower, I guess. And I also use these wax seals a lot in my spreads. And specifically, I really like um, this gold one for this. I've been wanting to use the gold one for a while. I think it has like a person on a horse. It just looks really fancy, which I feel like matches, again, the vibe of Manjali. And in a second, I'm going to be adding some torn book pages because I really wanted um, to make it clear that this is a book to movie adaptation. And actually, I never made a reading journal spread for Rebecca, so I guess this kind of counts as both. Also, I found some new stars that I like. They're kind of this like bronzy gold color. I'm not even sure how you would describe this color, but they're really teeny tiny. They look more like confetti stars, I guess, or like, you know, that you've kind of just like thrown a bunch on the page. And I'm so happy I found them because they look really cute in this spread. I wish that I would have um, shown you the collection that they came from, but I did not look myself. I kind of just found them and then didn't think about them again. I will say, I did think this movie was filmed really beautifully, especially the beginning when they're in Monte Carlo. I just didn't like how the characters and the plot were changed. I just feel like they made changes that were, I don't know, they were just too different from the book. Like the changes they made were things that were integral. But anyway, now I'm just going in with some of my magazine cutout letters. Oh, also I keep a running list of items that, I'm, that I need to find again on Pinterest. And my magazine letters are one of those. I will keep looking for these. And then I'm adding the date and adjusting the color with the duotone feature again, except this time I used one of the preset colors. This pink was really cute, I loved it, but I ended up changing it to white. That's it for this spread. It's really simple, but pretty, I think. The next spread I'm making is for my movie journal again, and it's for Oppenheimer. I do not participate in societal trends <laughs> very often, so I have not seen Barbie at all, and I just recently watched Oppenheimer. Actually, I will say, if there was one movie, like if I was going to see it in theaters, I would have picked Oppenheimer anyway. I probably would never have gone to see Barbie in theaters. No offense to Greta Gerwig. Actually, I watch all of her films. Like anytime a new Greta Gerwig movie comes out, I watch it. Um, but I also feel the same way about Christopher Nolan. Like I'm there every single time. I, I have not missed a single Christopher Nolan film drop since I was like a child. I have sat, I even sat through Dunkirk. I did not particularly want to see that movie and I still sat through it. But like, yeah, no offense to Greta Gerwig. I love Little Women. Little Women 2019 is one of my favorite ever movies. So, you know, no beef there. I just like did not think I would enjoy the Barbie movie that much. And also I kind of have such a disdain for Barbie things now, which makes me really sad because I had so much Barbie stuff growing up. But like even seeing anything Barbie now, I'm just like, oh my goodness. Like my journal last year, I put a bunch of Barbie stickers on the front of it and I regret it every single time I look at it because I just kind of hate it. Anyway, I absolutely loved Oppenheimer as expected. I honestly, I feel like Christopher Nolan's last film was Tenet, right? And that was good. And I feel like he does kind of like thrillers and like sci-fi thrillers better than really anyone else could. But I kind of feel like Christopher Nolan should lean into this direction as well of like telling a story, a person's life story like this. It was just so compelling. Obviously, Killian Murphy is an incredible actor. There were, I will say though, that's something I don't like about Christopher Nolan's films. I do not like an ensemble cast. I do not want to look at every single person on the screen and know who they are. Like for example, I'm not Florence Pugh's biggest fan. I don't know why. I just don't think her acting is giving what everyone else says it is. But like her character was a perfect example of, I think kind of anyone could have played her. Like we didn't need like the Florence Pugh to play her character, right? I think especially in a movie about someone's life, like this was a real person, I definitely think kind of the the amount of stars in the movie should have been dialed back a little bit. It was just so like, why is Josh Peck there? <laughs> why, was, why was Josh Peck at the testing of the first nuclear bomb? So that just makes it, you know, a little silly to me, but I had so much fun for all three hours, three long hours. It didn't even feel long. Compare watching Oppenheimer to watching the Batman and tell me which one feels longer. That's absurd. Like. I'm speaking as someone who does not go to the movies. The last time I went to the movies, I'm pretty sure Captain America and Iron Man were beefing. Like that's the last time I went to the movies. And I just do not want, even in the comfort of my own home, 
to sit through a three hour movie. I need people to start getting into the editing room and making cuts, making some chops. But Oppenheimer did not feel like it was three hours long at all. I enjoyed every last second of it. But anyway, I haven't even talked about the spread yet. Oh my goodness. I actually end up changing this entire spread. I really, really love that floral folk art. But the more I looked at the spread, the more I felt like it was just not looking the way I wanted it to. It made for such an interesting color palette though. I didn't want it to look too vibrant given the heaviness of Oppenheimer's legacy, of course. I used wallpapers that reminded me of how he saw all those visions, like lots of stars, of course. And those little um, heart stickers shaped like the globe. Oh my goodness. They're so cute. Like, yeah, nuclear technology really could end us all at any moment, <laughs> but I still love the planet. Those are so cute. The Hello Kitty Apple stickers were a very random find, but apples are kind of sciencey, right? Like, that's how Newton first developed his theory for gravity. <laughs> and then I really wanted to use a clock font to write the date because I thought it would look like a countdown, right? I feel like they advertised the movie with the countdown clock a lot, didn't they? Or am I just making that up? But as I started tearing the spread apart, I decided it didn't fit in well, so I got rid of it. But I still think it was a good idea. I mostly kept everything similar. I just made the movie cover bigger and just scooched everything around. I like it a lot better like this. And I think the end result turned out cute. Um, and the color palette is still more muted too, which is exactly how I wanted it. This next spread is for my archive journal and it is my birthday spread. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. My birthday, I'm laughing, but my birthday was terrible. It was as bad as I thought it would be, I think, or maybe even worse. Um, it's fine though, because it's over now. <laughs> but this spread is going to be way cuter than my birthday even deserves. I really love this art on the left-hand side. When I found it on Pinterest, um, it had a link back to a Weibo and there's also a little stamp at the bottom of it. But I wish I knew if this artist has any other type of social media because I would love to check out more of their work. I feel like I've seen more of it on Pinterest, you know, like kind of just like similar style and vibe. So I'm assuming it's also their work, but I just think it's really pretty. Also, as I'm decorating this, I just wanted to say, I'm going to do something different for my birthday next year. I don't know what's going to be different about it, but I'm going to make a plan that ensures my birthday can't be terrible. <laughs> because this year, like I feel like everything that I was going to do, um, so like I was going to have a little glow up, <laughs> AKA just buy myself some new skincare, that didn't happen. I was going to go secondhand book shopping, that didn't happen. And that was literally all I wanted for my birthday and neither of those things happened. And then on top of that, the actual day itself was terrible. Um, I, I cried, my mom cried. She had really had no business crying because she's the one that made me cry. Um, my birthday cake got ruined. <laughs> I put on fake nails and I forgot that I was about to start spring cleaning, like deep cleaning and decluttering my, my room. And I was like, um, and so I had to rip all my fake nails off. <laughs> it was just too much. And I will not be going through it again. Like I'm making a plan for next year to ensure that that does not happen. Please stop me from talking so much. OMG. To explain this spread, I mostly wanted to match the colors of the art I used. So I found yet another plaid background I like. It's a really pretty blue color. This is probably one of my favorite shades of blue. And then I used some torn paper frames to add the star and heart wallpapers to the bottom right. I really love pink and red together and green is a complementary color to red, of course. So this Kuropi memo sheet was perfect. I like that it looks like they're singing happy birthday to me. <laughs> This keychain is kind of the star of the show. Isn't it so cute? The fluffy heart, the ribbon with the pom-poms. I love it. I adjusted the color a bit with one of the regular effects filters because it looked a little washed out, a little grayish. So I just wanted to like add that pink back into it. I also found a bunch of Hello Kitty name tags. I'll definitely be using them more in the future. They're really perfect for writing the date. Sorry if I use Hello Kitty a lot, by the way. She's just my favorite Sanrio character. I should show you my Hello Kitty stationery collection one day, actually. It's all from the early 2000s when I was a child, of course. The story got everything from, it doesn't even exist anymore. And I'm still so confused what it was because I always called it the Hello Kitty store, but it wasn't a Sanrio store at all. Maybe it was like a general kawaii store, like a, like a Japanese goods store. I don't know. Speaking of stationery, I found a different Hello Kitty Jello sticker sheet. Jello? Not Jello, jelly sticker sheet. I was so excited, but then I realized the quality of the image was really low. 
I still downloaded it and removed the background, but these stickers are definitely best used as tiny little accents because they're way too blurry when they're enlarged. It has so many cute options though. I decided to use Hello Kitty flying this little cute plane because of the matching colors. I also wanted to show you that Canva does have a way to make shadows if you don't want to hand draw them the way I like doing. If you click on edit photo and then scroll down to effects, it's to the left of duotone. And then you want to click on the option that says drop because we want a drop shadow. It's really customizable, which is nice. So you could play around with the angle and the blur and the size. But to me, it just looks so fake and it's digital. So like, of course it's fake, but I can never get it to look subtle enough. I just wanted to show that to anyone who might be interested or who didn't even know that Canva had a shadow feature at all. And I decided to layer this hot pink ribbon on top of the keychain and I was so happy that it looks perfect with it. It really tied in the color of the star wallpaper as well. And I drew some shadows around it as well since realistically it would be casting a shadow onto the keychain. Also, I didn't screen record my writing process for any of the spreads, just a forewarning. So I have no footage of me doing the shadows this time, but I love how this spread turned out. I feel like I avenged my birthday a little. The final spread for this video is actually another one for my movie journal. I watched Classmates, which was on my to be watched list for the month. Actually, I watched both films that were on my to be watched list, so I'm proud of myself. This is an animated movie. It's honestly kind of a short film. It's only like an hour long and it's an adaptation of a manga. It's called the same thing, Classmates. I don't know how to say it in Japanese. Do you say? I don't know. I don't want to butcher anything. <laughs> but it's about two boys, classmates, of course. They meet kind of, well, I guess they already knew each other because they were classmates. But basically one day, one of the characters forgets something in his classroom, he, forget, he forgets his lunchbox. And so when he goes back at the end of the day after classes to go get it, he sees that his classmate is inside practicing the song they're supposed to be singing for this upcoming recital. And he tells him like kind of where he's gone wrong. And he's like, I can help you if you want. And that's how their relationship begins. That's how they begin to have feelings for each other. I loved the summer vibes of this so much. I would definitely recommend watching it when it's warmer outside, when it's summer even specifically. The way it was animated was so nice. Like there were parts of it where kind of like panels popped up as if you were reading the manga itself, which I thought was like genius. And it it just, the experience of it, it kind of felt like an indie anime, right? Like it's such a beautiful adaptation. I mean, I've never read the manga, even though I do want to read the series now. But yeah, I just loved the way it was animated. It was just such a cute story. And also, even though it was only an hour long, I feel like so much happened. Like, I was like, how is this only one volume of a manga? Because I think the manga is only like five chapters long or something like that. So that was also really impressive. For this spread, I wanted to use like a lot of greens. I wanted it to have that kind of like summery, like everything is so green in the summer, right? I wanted it to have that kind of vibe. I found this photo of a building on Pinterest. I don't really know if this is a Japanese building specifically, but it kind of actually looks like a Japanese school building a little bit. Well, the ones I've seen photos of anyway, like the ones in cities, I guess, it does look a little bit like that. And also I found these panels from the manga. I thought this part in the movie was so funny. Again, it was so like, it was just so perfect the way they animated it. I just thought um, there, was, there were a lot of like really funny moments and him trying to ensure that they're both under the umbrella together after he like kind of tries to kiss him is so funny. <laughs> so I wanted to add that in as well. I actually ended up making two versions of this spread, which I'll show you how they kind of both look. Oh my gosh, also y'all, a crime has been committed. Canva took away my favorite tape, my favorite clear adhesive tape. It's just gone. Like the item is still in other spreads that I made, but you can no longer search for it. Had I not made that video of all my favorite Canva items, I literally would have looked insane trying to tell you about this piece of tape because you can't find it anymore. So unless it's in one of your previous spreads, it's just not there anymore. And like, isn't that so disappointing? Because the reason I even realized is because I was scrolling through all of my starred items and I was like, where is my favorite piece of tape at? And I was like, maybe I just accidentally clicked like the star again. Like maybe I just un unfavorited it. And then when I searched it manually, I was like, um, yeah, it's just not there anymore. So I'm so sad to report that. RIP the kind of slightly crinkled piece of clear adhesive tape.
And honestly, I had no idea that, like, I guess I could understand an individual creator, like, removing items that they'd uploaded, but I had no idea that Canva removed elements like that. Also, before I forget, I wanted to say I love the cell phone charm and the onigiri keychain I found for the spread. The Miffy phone charm is music themed, so I thought that fit in perfectly. I'm also using that new Hello Kitty sticker sheet again. As you can see, I used the panda from it, and I'm also using Hello Kitty's grandpa. <laughs> I love that her family is included in that sticker sheet, along with almost all her friends. Now I'm showing you the other version of this spread that I made. It's pretty similar, actually, but I wanted to show the duotone feature more clearly. When you've selected the item you'd like to change the color of, you click on Edit Photo, and then just scroll a little bit to the Effects section, and it's right there in the middle. There are preset color waves you can scroll through, like the pink that I used earlier, but I like to click on custom and you can then change the shadow color and the highlight color to whatever you'd like. That's really it. <laughs> but I thought I would still show it because I'm a visual learner. I don't know. I like things explained. I did like this version of the spread, by the way, but ultimately I just thought the movie poster looked better when it was taking up a whole page. So I went with the first one I made. This is my final spread for this video. So all that's left to do is to put everything into my journals and color in some of the stars. While I'm adding the spreads to my journals, I wanted to say thank you for 300 subscribers, over 300 subscribers at this point. I feel like every time I post a video, there's some kind of new milestone and I really appreciate it so, so much. I'm too shy to say I love you, but uh, it's too soon. It's too soon, right? It's too soon. It's too soon. <laughs> oh, this is a good place to remind any new viewers that everything I use my spreads will be in my Pinterest board, which is linked below, except for the four or five perpetually missing items. Of course, if you ever can't find anything, definitely leave a comment because sometimes I overlook items. I try to pin everything in the order that I use them in my videos, if that makes sense. I feel like at a certain point, I'll probably just have to organize my board into sections though, like one for sticker sheets, one for memo notes, one for backgrounds, etc. And with that said, I'm all finished updating my digital journals. Thank you so much for watching today's video. It was so fun chatting with you. If you have any other questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone. Mm -hmm.